Coming in at number 10, we have Venom's ability to detect members of his symbiote family. Like many other carnivorous, terrifying alien races from beyond the stars, the symbiotes have something similar to a hive mind that, when utilized, allows Venom to know the general location of any symbiotes that originally spawned from him. And while it's not a perfect ability, given the amount of times that other symbiote villains have been able to block Venom's radar, it's still a pretty unique talent that comes in extra handy every time Spider-Man needs help facing another symbiote threat. Coming in at number 9, we have Venom's power of parasitic inheritance. While the Venom movies have recently made it seem like Venom's similar appearance and abilities to Spider-Man are all just a weird coincidence, the comics make it clear that this was anything but. When the Venom symbiote was originally bonded with Peter Parker, it actually inherited some of his spider-based abilities, meaning that Venom will always be able to create webs and use the wall crawler's powers against him. This also means that if the Venom symbiote infects any other super-powered heroes or villains, it can also gain their powers, which honestly has been pretty underutilized in the Marvel Universe so far, with the exception of the occasional What If storyline. Coming in at number 8, we have Venom's Matter Manipulation. Now, everybody knows that Venom is made of weird, icky goop that he can control. It's kind of his most defining trait, and his initial twisted, melted Spider-Man appearance is still iconic to this day. But did you know that this ability is actually way more powerful than you might think? Whenever Flash Thompson took over the role as the symbiote's host, as Agent Venom, he showcased the ability to use bits of his symbiote essence as a projectile weapon or bullet, and then using his manipulation abilities on the bullet to tear an enemy apart from the inside out. Definitely not the nicest way to take out a villain, but hey, he's still Venom, so you gotta have a little bit of anti in that anti-hero. Number seven, motorcycle. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Amanda, having a motorcycle is not a superpower. And you're right, it's not a superpower. But hear me out, Black Canary just doesn't own a motorcycle. She's exceptionally skilled at driving it. And just driving in general, actually. In my opinion, she could actually add stunt driving to her resume as a skill. Based on what she's shown us, this is a job she could definitely rock. Also, I would read a series where Black Canary was a stunt driver. I feel like that'd be super cool. She's like, I'm a rock star by night and a stunt driver by day. Basically, I'm just the coolest person ever in my fishnets. Coming in at number 6, we have Venom's all-natural tracker beacons. Another addition to his moveset during the Flash Thompson slash Agent Venom era, Venom didn't need to rely on technology or GPS when trying to track down one of his targets. By using the same ability that allows him to know the location of his offspring, Agent Venom was capable of sticking a piece of his own symbiote self onto others and then track them down as if he'd placed a literal beacon on themselves. It might be crude, low-tech, and a lot goopier than your usual method of tracking, but you really can't argue with the results. Number five, spells and phrases. When Wanda says those three words, no more mutants, the world just flipped. But Wanda has a vast array of spells she can use, and I'm really hoping we start to see this side of her now that Agatha has dragged her into the hashtag witch life. She also has this ability to purify objects as well. For instance, in Scarlet Witch issue 10, she purified a lake with a spell and then tossed a demon in, freeing the two souls that it was possessing. And if you need to sneak around town at all, maybe a sneak attack on a supervillain perhaps, she can use a spell to make objects or people invisible. No cloak of invisibility needed. Coming in at number 4, we have Venom's ability to merge with inanimate objects. That's right, we all know that symbiotes are easily capable of bonding with other organic life forms, whether they be human or alien, but a rarely seen ability of the symbiote race is that they can bond with inanimate objects if the need ever arises for survival. In one particularly notable instance, the Venom symbiote once combined itself with a broken down car so that it would have a body capable of moving throughout the city, repairing the car with its own tendrils to make it fully operational. Nay, hey, I guess it beats a mechanics bill. Number 3, Flight. That's right, during Volume 3 of Birds of Prey, we also get to see Black Canary use her canary cry to soar across a gorge. This is a power that I, even I was surprised to find out about, but Volume 3 of Birds of Prey was a big one for Black Canary. Dinah's powers are fluctuating and we get to see a lot of growth with them as a result. She's basically just a badass in this series and I really love it. If you haven't read Volume 3, you should go read it. Also, if you haven't read a lot of Birds of Prey, you should go read a lot of it, because it's really good. But 
Don't take my word for it, read it. Coming in at number two, we've talked about symbiotes merging with inanimate objects, but what about the internet? That's right, in probably the most 90s possible storyline of all time, Venom and Carnage brought their endless back and forth struggle for dominance into the digital age, with this comic making canon that symbiotes can manipulate their molecules to such a tiny degree, they can slip into the molecules that make up the internet data stream. Now, I'm not an IT guy, but I'm pretty sure that's not how the internet works. However, if you experience any technical glitches with this video, it's totally because Venom and Carnage are just punching each other in between the pixels of your screen. This power was so weird that it hasn't made a reappearance since, but it definitely is one of the more memorable Venom storylines. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have Venom's most recent power up, but also potentially his weirdest with Symbiote Time Vision. Following the defeat of the symbiote god Null, Eddie Brock and his symbiote have taken Null's place as the symbiote leader. With this great responsibility comes a lot of great power, including the ability to not just merge with any symbiote throughout space, but throughout time as well. Meaning any symbiote, past or future, can be suddenly seen through the eyes of Eddie Brock. With Eddie initially being completely overwhelmed by the disorienting process, this is a power that may take Take some time to properly wield, but could just be Venom's strongest gift of all. Number 10, Nature Manipulation. This one's a little fun, but not too shocking when it comes to magical beings. Nature Manipulation, that's right. If you're not too happy with your garden or your lawn situation, Wanda could come over and just fix it all up for you easy peas. She can manipulate and control nature at her will. She even says all things organic bow to my will, whether they be fire, air, or water. In Giant Sized Avengers issue 4, we see her literally attack Vision with a giant boulder. And then she even uses hot magma as a weapon at one point as well. You can't bring guns to a boulder fight, that's just how it works with these Avengers. And before we go on to number 9 guys, if you could go ahead and give us a thumbs up on this video because it really does go a long way for us. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's keep going with this list. Number nine, power augmentation. Sometimes you're playing a sport and maybe your buddy starts gassing out and you just wish that you could give them some of your energy just to keep going. Well, if you're a Wanda Maximoff, that would be easy breezy. That would be doable, no problem. That's right, Wanda can enhance, increase, and super boost the superpowers of others. They get way stronger than they're used to. I mean, once she even used this on Pietro Quicksilver and he was able to run at the speed of light. You can find this in Avengers issue 690. She also lent a hand to Wonder Man as she powered him up so much he was able to take out Morgan Le Fay, who at the time had the Twilight Sword and the Norn Stones. And you can find this in Avengers volume three, issue three. So yeah, power augmentation. She can boost you up when you're feeling tired in the morning. Who needs coffee? She'll just be like, hey, now you can fly. Enjoy. Number eight, teleportation. Whenever my friends and I talk about what powers we wish we had, because you know, that's a normal conversation to have in your mid 20s as an adult. I always, always say teleportation. Wanda has the ability to send herself or others any place she wants. Could be a super far distance, bam, cancel your Uber, I gotcha. We see her use this power in Avengers vs. X-Men issue six. She also showcases this ability in Avengers The Children's Crusade issue seven. So when Wanda decides that the fight should cool down, she just whisks everybody away over to Castle Doom. Coming in at number seven, we have Venom's Poisonous Bite. That's right, you'd think it would be obvious from having a name like Venom, but this symbiote's fangs aren't just for show. They contain a special form of symbiote poison that's been shown to be even deadlier than that of a snake's. With the teeth on Venom only being developed at Eddie Brock's command, this ability hasn't been showcased too often in the comics, but does make a surprise recurrence every now and then when Eddie needs to get out of a tight situation. In fact, the voison on Venom's bite is so strong that Sandman once lost his ability to hold his form for a time because he was bitten. And this is a dude that's literally made out of sand. Just imagine what teeth like those would do to a regular person, and maybe it's a good thing that Venom often forgets to chew his food. Number six, portals. One of the best moments in the MCU easily is when Doctor Strange portals all of our heroes back to the final battle. It's amazing. 
the music, the colors, and goosebumps. That's how you do it. Now, believe it or not, Wanda 2 can create these portals, and at one point in issue 8 of Scarlet Witch Volume 2, she uses this ability to create two portals at the same time, which is super cool. If you played the game Portal, you know exactly where I'm going with this one. She can also summon help by transporting somebody to her location. Similar to Brother Voodoo, she once summoned minions of Sidorak to magically fix up the Avengers mansion. That's gotta be convenient. I mean, my room's messy right now. I could really use some minions of Sidorak to come and do some laundry. Number five, fishnet armor. During volume three of Birds of Prey, Kandor joined the team for a while. Due to Black Canary making a jab at his costume, he decided to make fun of hers, focusing on the fact that she was wearing fishnets. How rude, how rude, how dare you. This is when we discovered though, the tactical purpose behind Black Canary's fishnets, which I love. She later told him when he kept calling her fishnets that these fishnets were actually armor. They were Kevlar carbon fiber polymer mesh with self repairing nanobots. So take that. Also, her initial response to his remark about them is priceless. She makes fun of his bird suit. He asks if she's wearing fishnets. And she throws the question right back at him, saying that he's been staring at them for long enough, so he should probably know. Number four. Reality warping. Wanda is no stranger to warping reality, especially in WandaVision. I mean, of all things, it's the main theme. It's super impressive when she uses this reality warping power when she's fighting as well, not just to make herself in a sitcom. It's kind of like Thanos using the stones to make Doctor Strange's spells turn into butterflies, or when he literally pulls reality closer to him. It's insane, but basically Scarlet Witch shows this technique when she battles Hope Summers in Avengers vs X-Men issue 6. And Loki, being the god of mischief, would have had a fun time going against Wanda as well, because she too can create these massive illusions. She actually once tricked the Emerald Warlock to make him believe that he had actually defeated her in a battle. Scarlet Witch then reveals herself without a single scratch on her face. Coming in at number three, we have Venom's healing ability. Now, healing abilities aren't exactly rare in the Marvel Universe, and Venoms can do everything you would expect from the gift. Cuts get healed over, broken bones are fixed in place, and any limbs lost can be easily regenerated. However, there's one aspect of Venom's healing that seems to go beyond that of even Wolverine. When Eddie Brock found out that he'd contracted cancer, the Venom symbiote was able to slow the cancer's spread and eventually healed the entire affliction. Curing cancer? That's definitely outside the realm of usual superhero powers, and something Venom definitely doesn't bring up enough. Number two, chaos magic. The end of episode eight of WandaVision had fans pretty jazzed. See, Agatha Harkness refers to Wanda finally as the Scarlet Witch but she also references chaos magic. So what is this chaos magic? Well, in the comics, Wanda got her powers through the old god of chaos, Kathan. This god came to her the day she was born, not really a blessing, but rather it was done so, so that this chaos god could add to Wanda's powers and then use her as a vessel down the road one day when she's fully grown. We see this all take place in Avengers issue 186, but luckily the Avengers stopped this from happening in the next issue. So perhaps for the MCU telling of this story, maybe Agatha is just gonna take the place of the chaos god and maybe try and feed on her magic to do more herself. But with Vision coming back and the kids being Wiccan in speed, I don't think she'll need the Avengers here. I think she'll just need her happy family to take out all the evil. And finally, number one, magical awareness. Wanda is loaded with many, many amazing abilities, as we just heard a handful of them. We could do two, maybe three videos on her abilities alone. But one of the coolest, in my opinion, is her magical awareness. It's like a feeling. It's kind of like spider sense, but for magicians. So Wanda has the ability to be aware of pretty much anything that affects her or her surroundings. She can also detect auras, super witchy. And we see this as well in issue one of Scarlet Witch, when Wanda senses something out in the city that isn't right. And then when Agatha responds with, well, yeah, it's New York City, things aren't right all the time, Wanda says, no, 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 it's witchcraft. She can feel it. She can determine if you're good or evil, and she can also track magic. In The Order, issue five, she's able to tell where Doctor Strange last used his magic. And then in Avengers issue 152, she could also determine the origin of a stone by using this magical awareness. Number 10, Super Durability. Dinah is tough and strong. In the new 52 and even before this, this all likely came from the training that she did prior to her life as a vigilante, and her experience fighting crime thereafter. At one point, she is shown being durable enough to survive jumping down a stairwell to save time, and catching herself on a ledge with a single hand. The fact that she doesn't appear to injure herself or break any parts of her hands or her wrists or her arms or dislocate a shoulder shows just how tough she is and how brave she is for even trying such a stunt. I mean like, whoa, I would not do that. I'd be like, I'm gonna die. 
She does kind of jump over the rail being like, I might die, but it's fine. Number 9. Master Martial Artist in the New 52, Black Canary was retconned. Instead of being the daughter of a vigilante and a police officer, she grew up an orphan on the city streets. Desmond Lamar was the owner and trainer of a dojo and found her dumpster diving. He took her in, giving her food and lodging in exchange for her help cleaning and maintaining the dojo. Eventually, he also began to train her. She went on to become a black belt and a master martial artist, being trained in jujitsu and judo. When Desmond discovered he had cancer, he changed his will so that Dinah would inherit the dojo after he passed away. Oh my gosh. And while it was in her care, she actually trained many other students there as their master. That is until the dojo was lost in a fire during a citywide power outage, which caused Dinah to begin her career as a team-based hero who would then go on to gain her superpowers. And let's not forget that one time that Black Canary and Lady Shiva swapped lives pre-New 52. Also, Lady Shiva's trained her a bunch, so there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. Number 8. Accuracy. When you have been in and out of a relationship with Green Arrow as many times as Black Canary has, you would kind of expect that she might have some proficiency with a bow and this might have rubbed off on her because you know it's kind of Green Arrow's thing. And in a way it has. One thing that we have seen Black Canary adopt is a certain affinity for accuracy. That is to say she is away with arrows. More specifically we've seen her use speed, accuracy and skill to pluck an arrow mid flight right before it was about to strike its intended target. Impressive. Along with that, we have seen her accurately destroy an arrow as it soared, targeting and shattering it with her canary cry before it could find its mark. Which, I mean, is less impressive because I feel like it radiates, but still pretty cool that she could be like, I'll just break it. Canary cry is so useful, actually. When people know how to write it properly, it's a pretty cool superpower. Number seven, Witch Sight. Being the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff has the ability of Witch Sight. And I think we're gonna start seeing this more now with WandaVision creeping up to that finale because at the end of episode eight, we see Agatha Harkness in full on witch form. I mean, she's floating, she's got Billy and Tommy by the neck and she looks pretty good too. As far as old witches go, I'm like, you seem pretty good. It was an epic way to lead us into the finale. A lot of secrets are coming out and Wanda in the comics uses her witch sight to see things, of course, beyond a normal human's capabilities. In Scarlet Witch Volume 2, Issue 2, she was able to detect this powerful, invisible minotaur. Also, an invisible minotaur sounds way scarier than Thanos. I don't know, that sounds terrifying. She also uses this witch sight in the next issue to see Agatha Harkness' spirit. Now, she wasn't able to see this during the sitcom parts, so either Agatha revealed herself or she allowed Wanda to tap in and see her true Salem witch look. Either way, she has a great look and Wanda can see it, so something's cooking. Number six, Canary Cry Bombs. Black Canary isn't always super powered in the comics. In fact, in the Arrowverse, she doesn't have powers at all. Laurel Lance, as we know her, is actually forced to rely on tech for a canary cry as a result. And likewise, when she has become depowered in the comic book world, Dinah has been forced to turn to tech to give her that extra oomph. One of her favorite gadgets to use in times where she has found herself without her superpowers has been her canary cry bombs. These circular little bombs explode with a big, shrill sonic blast and work to provide a good substitute for her debilitating and destructive scream even when she's without it. Coming in at number 5, we have one of the newer abilities on this list, the power of flight. First manifesting after Eddie and Venom's first encounter with Null, the god of all symbiotes, Venom had apparently been hiding his ability to sprout a pair of blood red dragon wings the entire time, a symbol of Null's impressive symbiote dragons. However, when you're already capable of swinging, climbing walls, and even breathing in the vacuum of space, the ability to fly just isn't quite as impressive as it would be on a character that was stuck on the ground up until this point. Ah well, giant symbiote wings, you still look rad as hell to me. Number 4. Mental Fortitude During a fight against Mortis, Black Canary was feeling the effects of their empathic powers. With one touch, Mortis was able to bring flooding back all of Dinah's biggest life regrets. This is a villain who is known for causing people to commit suicide with their emotionally corrupting powers. But Black Canary's will was too strong to give in. She managed to fight off the effects of Mortis's infectious touch, focusing on the love for her teammates and refusing to give up. Not only is she physically strong, but Dinah is also emotionally strong as well. Number three, time control. Doctor Strange wasn't the only player with time control. I mean, my hopes are that by the end of this show, she unlocks all these crazy Scarlet Witch abilities and everything I've listed just becomes part of her power roster. Just full on Scarlet Witch mode. And then she becomes the new Time Master after the next Doctor Strange. Hopefully, it's a stretch, but let me explain. I think this whole show and well, the MCU up until now is basically just her getting beat down. And now she's just gonna start rising up. 
this time in full control. But yeah, she controls time in the comics, specifically in Uncanny Avengers issue four. She slows time down and her powers are so strong that she can stop or freeze time. She does so in Star Issue 3, where she literally freezes time so Ripley Ryan doesn't take out Jessica Jones. She also makes the Avengers have a little time out during Captain America and the Falcon Issue 6. If only she could, you know, speed up time so we can see what happens in the finale this week, that would be great. Number two, liquefy. Eventually, Black Canary's Canary Cry has become so strong that it has been implied in the comics that she can liquefy bones and even shatter skulls and dissolve brains. So while you think earplugs might be all you need to deal with Black Canary, you'd be wrong. Not only is she tough, a skilled fighter, an amazing singer, and a skilled driver, but her Canary Cry has grown over the years to become one of the most powerful superpowers. Not just for her. As I said before, it's her only real superpower, but also within the DC universe has just become super powerful. As her canary cry grows, who knows what she'll be able to take on next. I'm, I'm just waiting for her to develop enough that she might be able to use it to cause like global earthquakes and tidal waves. Like she'll just be creating natural phenomenons with it. Not that a superhero would likely seek to do that, of course. That's my supervillain mind coming in. Sorry about that. Number one, demolish buildings. No big deal. During the Clash of Daggers story arc, Black Canary experienced an increase in her power levels. These flare-ups were causing her to lose control of her powers somewhat, and she accidentally created a citywide power outage in Gotham when, during a fight, she blew up a power station. Yeah, and she wasn't even trying to do that. I know, it's crazy. The flare-up she was experiencing made her unleash her canary cry uncontrollably on a level she hadn't previously experienced. Also, she knocked Starling down pretty hard in the process as well, unintentionally. But it was like a cliffhanger at the end of that, that issue. You were like, oh my gosh, what happened? But then Starling got right back up, so not as cool. Still, the power station was destroyed. That's pretty cool. I hope this list gave you something new to appreciate about Black Canary. Dude.